All right, so today we're gonna start on singularities. So singularities basically studies a function that are analytic in a punctured disk, okay? So, so first the information is that if f has an isolated singularity of z equals to a, which means that there exists a radius such that it's an analytic in a punctured disk, but not in the entire disk. Okay, that is it defined and analytic in this. So F A not defined. Right? So you might think about well one over z, right? Then one over zero not defined, right? One over z has uh is isolated there's already as one over z has z equals zero, right? <coughs> it's like R equal to one, right? And well, there's a singularity, isolated one. Well, if the singularity is a removable one, which is a removable singularity, which means that if there exists an analytic such that it is analytic on the disk, such that it is equal to f on z not equal to a. Okay, so that means that if a is removable, is a removable one, which means that we can kind of remove it, right? Because we can extend, we can extend, we can extend f to an analytic g on a disk, right? So we can extend it to another analytic function g, okay? So this is another characterization. Well, if f is isolated singularity at a, then it's a removable one if or only if we have this limit. So we have this limit is equal to zero. Okay, so we'll see that while this goes to zero, so either fz is either fz is finite or something, right? It doesn't like as that it goes to a, right? So if we have this limit, then a is a removable one. So here, first f is analytic in here, so we define g z to be this. Okay, so it's not equal to a. We define this. If it's equal to a, we define a to be zero. So if we have this, so if we're given this, right? If we're given this, well, this is equal to G, right? Which means that this means that G is continuous, right? G is continuous. Now, given G is continuous, if we know that G is analytic, then we're done, right? Because, well, since G A is equal to zero, then G Z is equal to Z minus A H Z, where A is analytic and B R A. Right? We have this, right? Analytic on right. So HZ is equal to FZ for Z not equal to A. Right? So A is a removable. Okay? So we just want to show that G is analytic. If we show G is analytic, this gives that this. But this HZ is equal to FZ. Right? It is equal to Z for Z not equal to A, but H is analytic on BRA. Right? So A is a removable one. Right? So we just want to show that G is analytic. We apply Morera's theorem. So Morera's theorem states that if any triangular path is zero, then G is analytic. Right? So we apply Morera's theorem. So we let P, T be the triangle in BRA. We let this to be the interior and the, the edge, okay? The triangle. If A is not in a triangle, so if we have this A, this is our triangle, or like this is A, this is our triangle, right? This is our triangle T, right? Then T is in here, which is the open set. And, and we have that. Well, this function is analytic, right? Is analytic on an open set, right? G Z or or I mean Z, uh, is analytic on here, right? It is analytic on this set. Right, because we only know that um, G is continuous, but here, the definition here. 
But f is analytic on here, so which means that g is analytic on here, okay? So you might like questioning, well, it's not reverse, no, it's not. I mean, we're good, right? So it is analytic on the puncture disk, which means that this is equal to zero, right? By Cauchy Gussard. Gussard? Um, yeah, on a triangular path is zero. So, well, if A is on the vertex, Right, if A is on a vertex, then we just look at this, right? This, so we define P to be this polygon and T1 to be this triangle, okay? A, X, Y, A, and T, P is this. And T is equal to T1 plus P, right? Because this one cancels out, right? This one cancels out and we have this, this so it gives this into like in general okay but this one is equal to zero right because if we if we think about this again right these two triangle this gives you zero this again gives you zero right so it's equal to t so now we can make this closer 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 to a right we can make we can vary x y such that well, since G is continuous and G A is equal to zero, so G approaches zero as Z approaches to A, right? Which means that we can just we can just make this like really really close to A, right? For any f of zero, we can pick x y such that it is really really close to A for any Z and T one. Okay, so but L is the length of T. It doesn't really matter. it's just a constant, right? It's just a it's just a positive number for Z and T one, right? We can just make this close. Because A, it could be like in punctured disc, and we just make this inside the punctured disc. Oh, no. I mean, yeah, we just make this a disc, open disc, and just make this triangle inside the open disc, right? So we have this for any Z on Z1, and T1. <laughs> Hence, we have this is equal to this, less than or equal to this times the length of T1, right? Well, we have this, right, gives it this, and the length of T1 is this, well, which is equal to this, which is less than epsilon, because this thing is less than 1, right? Because L1 is supposed to be, like, right? If you're in a triangle, we just make it smaller. So less than epsilon. Which means that this is less than epsilon for any epsilon less than 0, then we have this. Okay, so if A is inside a triangle, then we just make right t1 is what x y a x t2 is this t3 is this right so a is on the vertex of t1 t2 t3 right a is on the vertex of these three triangles so they are equal to zero but the integral on t is the sum of them which is zero so as desired right so now for this direction If A is removable, then X extends an analytic G on disk, which means that this is equal to this, right? Because for Z not equal to A, F is equal to G, right? We have this, which is this, which is zero. G is analytic, so, I mean, it is continuous, right? So now we see that, well, if F has a non-removable singularity A, we need this either is not zero or it does not exist. So it could be that FZ approaches infinity faster than this if it was zero, or even like the entire thing like does not exist. I mean, could be, could be this thing, right? Right? Something like that. So anything could be like possible to cause to cause does not equal zero or it does not exist right <laughs> okay so we can't have this exist in finite then a is removable right if this exists and is finite then a is removable right because this goes to zero we can use the limit rule, right? So this thing goes to zero, then a, then, then, 
then is is a removable, right? We have we have this, all right? So, which means that. But the story is different if f is a real variable and real valued function, real analysis. Just consider like the most essential example. Well, this is equal to zero, right? But this is not differentiable. This function is not differentiable at all, right? Like you cannot extend this to another function and that is differentiable, right? But in complex analysis, we see that, well, well, if, if we have this, then it is a removable. Removable, then we can extend it to, a, to, a, to an analytic function. Okay. So a new definition is that for a singularity, it's a pole of f if we have this infinity. So if an isolated, isolated one is a neither pole nor removable, is essential singularity, okay? So removable means it is, it is extendable, and a pole is we have this. So if none of them, then it's essential singularity. So example is that, well, this is a pole as z equals to a, right? Because this goes to infinity, which meant this thing goes to, no, no, no. This goes to zero, and this thing goes to infinity, right? So proposition, uh, proposition is that if G is a region and F is analytic with a pole, then there exists a positive integer M and analytic function G such that we have this. So, we have this. so if F is analytic and has a pole, then we can write it in some terms like this, where G is analytic in general. Okay, so let's just prove this proposition first. Okay, so suppose f has a pole as z equals to a, then f is not zero near a, and we have this has a removable as z equals to a. Why? Because this is equal to zero times zero is zero, right? Which means that h z is equal to this for z minus a, and h z is equal to zero is analytic on the disk for some r. So why do we have h a must be zero, right? Because H Z is equal to this, and H is analytic, so it is continuous, right? Which means that H Z, um, Z goes to A, F Z, one of S is a zero, which is equal to H A, right? So H A should be equal to zero, right? We require this. We need this, right? be analytic in this because analytic is continuous and we have this goes to zero right since since as a pole as z equals a okay? a pole as z equals a means that this gives infinity so when you take the reciprocal it should give you zero right okay so we have this so here is the key point h is equal to zero gives that a z is equal to this for some integer m for some analytic with h one a not zero, right? We have proved this before. Then we have this is equal to this, right? For z not equal to a, because f is not defined at a, so we we have this equality for z not equal to a, right? Because this uh, we have this these two right, one over f z. 1 over f z equals to this, so we just move it here, and we take reciprocal, so we have this. And this has a removable as z equals to a. Why? Because this is equal to 0 times 1 over h a. It is not 0, it gives you 0. Which means that this has a removable as z equals to a, which means that we can extend this for g analytic on the disk. So we have this as desired, right? Which is like if it's a region, right? If it's a region, right? We 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 have this this for G a region. So we need G to be a region too. So we need G to be a region, right? We we can apply this.
Okay. Otherwise, we cannot apply this. Only if it's open and connected. Okay, that's that's what the corollary said. Okay, the corollary three point nine. So, yep, we have we have we have proof of this. G is analytic. So let's check this. True. Well, we can just extend this to G, right? Because uh, we have this G is analog here. So if, if Z is not equal to A, we just let G is equal to this, right? Because because this thing, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, not quite, not quite. Yeah, it's just analog on the disk and <laughs> We have this is what? Yeah, we just be this analytic and this is analytic what? This is analytic in general, right? If it's analytic on a uh, uh, region. So, so here we really picked a point, right? Really picked a ball, but it doesn't matter. So we can extend this to G, right? Because we have this. And this can be extended to G. Okay? So definition, because F has a pole as that equals to A. M is small integer such that this is removable. We say F is a pole of order M. So let F has a pole of order M as Z equals to A. FZ is equal to this, where G is analytic on a disk. So GZ has a, a power series expansion about A, right? Because it is analytic. Analytic function has a power series expansion in its domain. So GZ, we just write it in terms of this, okay? We write it in terms of this, okay? So one zero one m minus one m. So so this is right. So this is k k plus m, right? K plus m. So m plus m minus one and k is zero. So m and m plus one and so on, right? So we just we just break this apart. We picked m. We have. Uh, it's a pole of order m, so we make a breakpoint at m. So fz, right? fz is equal to this divided by g to m, right? We just divide by z minus a to the m. We have this plus this, right? Because this cancels out. And this is a, a power series, and we know that power series are analytic. So we have this equal to some g1z, where g1z is analytic and bra. So this part. Is called the singular part of f as z equals to a. And there is an analog of singular part that is valid for essentials. Okay, so we will we will talk about it in the next lecture. And before that, let's give some definition. So given this a double sequence of complex numbers, we see that we say that it is converges absolutely if both of those converges absolutely. And we define this as their sum. Okay, so this is negative infinity and infinity, and this is from zero to infinity, this is from what negative one to negative infinity, right? We define this as their sum. Now for functions, if there's an absolute is a W sequence of functions such as is a mapping from some set S to complex, this converges absolutely, then the converges is uniform if both of these converges are uniform. And for uh, R1, R2 and a complex number, we define analogs. Analogs, annulus, annulus, I don't know. But it's a, it's a set such that, right, we just, we just want a smaller region between them, right? R1, and this is, this is R2, right? And R1, R2. So if R1 happens to be zero, then it's a puncture disk, okay? so. We use we're gonna use these definition in the next lecture. Alright, so see you guys.